Thank you for joining us today and I hope to see you again at our future events. Thank you. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians who meet today, the Gadigal people of the Aura Nation, and pay our respects to elders past and present. Welcome to another Affinity Lunchtime Lecture. My name is Barry Unsworth and I'm a member of the Affinity Advisory Board. For those who've never attended an Affinity event before, let me briefly introduce you, introduce you to the organisation. Affinity was formed by a group of young Muslim Australians in 2000. Their aim is to promote multiculturalism and foster intercultural and interfaith dialogue by building bridges between different groups in our society. To give you a brief idea of the wonderful work that Affinity does, they put together a short recap video of their events in 2017, which we'd like to share with you now. Having respect for all people, regardless of race, regardless of religion, regardless of gender, and very, very importantly, regardless of a, the colour of a person's skin. People of all kinds are, are seeing differences, I think, a little more clearly. To be able to share more information, whether it's intelligence or case management material, whatever it is, faster and better. In addition, uh, the Department of Social Services is working closely with other departments like employment, education and training, human services and immigration and border protection on improving employment outcomes for humanitarian entrants. And this has got to be the largest number that we've had here. The night is about you and us uh, and as a community. Learning from each other, that's what Australia allows us to do. We are working together to make New South Wales safer. In fact, we have done that for many, many years. As we've come from so many other lands that we were able to meet here as one. We are the most culturally diverse country in the world. Uh, we all learn a little bit more about ourselves and about our community. Getting people together, you know, across different cultures and different um, communities and organisations together so we can pair and work together. The connections that we have are deep and varied. What we have seen and experienced by words and music this evening are the sort of things that hold us together and enable us to move forward together. Thank you for joining us today and I hope to see you again at our future events. Thank you so much. I'd now like to introduce today's facilitator, John McCarthy. During his diplomat service at the Holy See, John McCarthy was closely involved with human rights issues, particularly the eradication of modern slavery and human trafficking. John was also heavily engaged in conferences and consultations in Rome during 2015 regarding sustainable development goals. After his return to Australia, he's been heavily involved in the anti-slavery cause and since May 2017 has been chair of the Sydney Archdiocese Anti-Slavery Task Force. Report of the task force Bishop Fisher in January 2018 and he made a major announcement on February 8 on International Slavery, on Catholic International Slavery Day. During this time as a senior barrister he was briefed in many notable cases including the first recognition of native title on the Australian mainland. John appeared for the Dungati people. John has been involved in many and varied 
public and church affairs, including university governance, sports and arts administration, legal and professional committees, and international disaster relief activities. Please join me in welcoming John McCarthy to the rostrum. Uh, thank you, Barry, for that very illuminating uh, uh, biography. I've forgotten uh, some of the things there. Uh, it's a joy to be here. It's a joy to be here. Uh, I had occasions with affinity uh, before I went to Rome as the ambassador, but I had much to do with affinity in Rome, and you have some of your finest people uh, stationed in Rome, and I had uh, a period of dialogue with them over the, over the whole time that I was our ambassador to the Holy See. So affinity I know well, and I know what you, uh, what uh, it is envisaging in relation to uh, our wider world uh, and uh, of how they would like to advance uh, in uh, uh, bringing peoples of different cultures and different religions uh, together. Uh, I, uh, uh, I have uh, the greatest affection and respect for uh, their outlook and their program, and I'm glad to see that they continue to prosper in such uh, a tremendous way in our own country. And I'm delighted to be involved with uh, uh, the uh, opening of their uh, 2018 year. Now, they've asked me to acknowledge uh, the presence of a whole series of uh, their, uh, their friends. Uh, Karl Hatleb, the Austrian ambassador, Kelsa, Kel Kizo uh, Takawaka, the Japanese Consul, Aaron Wackel from Sierra Leone, Kira Mariah, the US Consulate here in Sydney, and John Con Cox, the Honorary Consul for Uganda, uh, Tony Long, a Chief Inspector in the New South Wales Police Force, Professor Ann Brewer from Newcastle University, Louisa Graham from the Walkley Foundation, Sister Gio Giovanni Farquhar, for, for, for whom I had an office uh, next door for, uh, for some months at Polling House, the Director of, uh, of Ecumenism and Interreligious Dialogue for the Archdiocese of Sydney, and Vic Aladev, the uh, redoubtable uh, CEO of the New South Wales Jewish Board of Deputies. I also am asked to uh, mention uh, how pleased Affinity is to have Stephen Blanks, the President of the New South Wales Council for Civil Liberties here, Susan Boyd, the President of the New South Wales Parents and Cit Citizens uh, Federation, Richard Bronowski, the President of the Australian Institute of International Affairs uh, uh, of New South Wales branch, Rifat a Abid, the President of the Australian Egyptian Forum uh, in, in, in Sydney. Abbas Raza Alvi, the President of We Australians Are Creative and Cooperative. Uh, I'd like to be able to qualify for that if I could find something creative uh, to, uh, to be a member. And Mamet Saral, the President of Advocates for, Dis for, for Dignity. Uh, I welcome you all uh, uh, on behalf of uh, Affinity, but I particularly welcome our uh, guest of honour and guest speaker, Professor the Honourable Robert Carr. Robert Carr is my oldest friend, uh, and uh, Robert Carr uh, is uh, one of the most well-known of uh, uh, any uh, of uh, uh, public personalities in our generation, 
uh, in New South Wales. And uh, I uh, welcome him here uh, as the particular guest of, uh, through sponsorship, uh, of Sammy Abdul Rahman and Marmot Saral, if uh, uh, that could be uh, something that uh, uh, they'll be able to uh, uh, have as a uh, uh, one of the milestones of what they've done for public life in New South Wales. Now, when one comes to Bob Carr, uh, all of us know the general story. Uh, he was the longest serving Premier of New South Wales. Uh, he uh, won three elections and, uh, in uh, in that period and uh, is the longest serving leader of the Labor Party in, uh, uh, in New South Wales. Uh, he had a period in uh, retirement and uh, uh, after 2005, but we all remember him more recently as the Minister for Foreign Affairs in the Gillard government and, uh, and the Rudd governments, and he served uh, Australia in that capacity also. Uh, the, since then, and it's usually in this context that uh, uh, people are interested in, uh, in Bob, that is, what's Bob doing now is usually what uh, people are asking. Uh, we all know what the general ba background is. Well, he's over at the University of Technology uh, hence the professor, and he's the uh, uh, the leader of the Australia-China Relations Institute, uh, and uh, this is uh, a group that's a think tank dedicated to Australia-China relations. Uh, you can't miss Bob Carr uh, because uh, the op-eds are about. Um, once, at least once a month, and uh, if uh, you're fortunate enough to be listening to radio in Sydney, uh, you'll also hear him in relation to that. If you think he's gone away, you're completely mistaken. Uh, Bob is uh, well and truly here, and he's well and truly a part of public life uh, in, uh, uh, in Australia. Uh, he also travels the world, and uh, uh, I... Uh, could give you many uh, interesting uh, stories about Bob in different parts of the world uh, and uh, of different uh, places where he has sent me uh, emails or uh, text messages. I think the two uh, <coughs> the two most interesting is uh, texting me to turn the television and watch the opening of the uh, Olympic Games in uh, Atlanta in, 18, in 1996. He said, look over on the left side and you'll see third, third row down, you can see Atlanta and I. Uh, that, was, that was one. Uh, the, other way, uh, the other one was sending me a text directly from Vézelay Cathedral in France saying, this is one of the most magnificent scenes I've ever uh, witnessed um, this must be one of the greatest buildings in human history, and I thought I'd just uh, uh, pass that on to you while I'm here, and uh, had had sent the uh, had sent the text message. But that was that's been one of a lifetime's worth of, worth of those. Uh, I uh, just would add that the later the main or permanent, I suppose most prominent connection uh, with Robert uh, is that uh, uh, I have six children, three daughters and three sons, and our youngest daughter is Helena Mary McCarthy, and Helena Mary McCarthy was named after Helena Carr, and in honour of Helena Carr. It may be the name of the great Saint Helena, who was the mother of Constantine, but uh, the one that focused us on it was the very redoubtable lady uh, whom I in actual fact knew before Bob Carr did. Uh, 
uh, when we were, uh, we were students. Uh, but someone that we've known and loved through all, all our lives in Helena Carr. So uh, uh, I have an Helena also, and that's our daughter who has gone and married an American and lives in New York. And, but the cars go over to visit her from time to time while, uh, uh, when they come by. Well, with that uh, uh, spotted points about uh, the present background, of, or present activities uh, of Professor the Honourable Robert Carr. Would you please welcome him to the microphone? <clears throat> Thank you, John.